there is a young man who I haven't even heard about until my friends Ash and Rich told me that I had to interview him. I had to hear him sing. He's going to be doing a brand new cabaret show at the Green Room 42 this Saturday night at 930. I am so excited to learn about him and to hear what all the things that he's done because when you see him, well, you've seen him now, he's young and yet he's got a background like you wouldn't believe. I'm talking Paul Iacono. Paul, have you been in New York all this time? I I have been uh mostly in New York. I've spent some I've spent some time in Los Angeles. Some of my work has brought me there, but I'm a New Yorker true and true. Now, have you done Broadway musical theater before? So I have done musical theater since I was a kid. I did, um, let's see, MAME with Christine Ebersole at the Paper Mill Playhouse when I was young. And uh, I did a musical by Noel Coward called Sail Away at Carnegie Hall with, with Elaine, Elaine Stritch, Stritch. Who, who we met during that when I was 11 and we were friends until she passed away. She was my stage godmother. Wow. And I have to say that uh, I she's probably the artist who has maybe most influenced me in a sense. So, um, yes, if, if that gives you any indication of uh, what's ahead. Yes, I'm looking forward to this. Um, you were also on the Rosie O'Donnell show. That's right. When I was uh, when I was a kid, I, uh, I I've, I've had a couple of sort of big breaks throughout my life. I, but as a kid, I was <laughs> discovered on the on the Rosie O'Donnell show uh, at age eight for impersonating Frank Sinatra and Ethel Merman, like oh, wow. all, like all, you know, normal eight-year-old boys uh, from Secaucus, <laughs> New Jersey do. Uh, and, uh, and we, we, we also hit it off and she had me back on the show. I think it was a total of 12, 12 times overall. I was like a frequent performer guest of hers. Um, so yeah, so I've, I've had, had a lot of uh, success throughout, throughout my, my almost, three decades in show business. And you were on the remake of Fame. That's right. In, in 2009, uh, they did a, MGM did a very big remake of the film. And uh, they were all up and coming newcomers like myself, who were the kids. And they had some incredible adult actors like uh, Debbie Allen and Megan Mullally and Kelsey Grammer, uh, Charles Dutton, anyway, B.B. Newirth. So that was a that was sort of a another big break experience for me. Maybe my, my that was sort of my big break as a, as a young adult, and uh, and that paved the way to my TV series. I'm not sure if if you were going to bring that up, but I'll, I'll plug that. Maybe not because what TV series? I was the lead of an MTV show, a scripted series called The Hard Times of R. J. Berger, and I was R. J. Berger. And it's, it was about a geek in high school who happens to have a large, I don't know if we can say this on this show, but a, a very personal body part. <laughs> hence, hence the hard times. Anyway, it was actually a great show, which had a lot of heart to it. Um, it was sort of like the Wonder Years meets Super Bad. It was sort of a raunchy coming of age story. And uh, that was another big break for me uh, in my early 20s. Okay, so I have a couple of questions. Um, first of all, who did you play in Fame? What was your character? So I played the aspiring filmmaker, sort of like a young Martin Scorsese. Or a, um, oh my God, what's his name in Rent? Oh, or Mark, Mark. from Rent. Yes, yes, yeah. A, a, a little bit a little bit more Scorsese, a little bit more of like a... a like a New York, a New York kid from a from a Jewish American family, and his dad owns a butcher shop, and he's trying to raise the money to make an independent film. And uh, spoiler alert, he he gets he gets duped out of it by a by a shady uh, producer investor. And anyway, you'll you'll have to check out the movie, but um, it's a, it was a fun time. And with R.J. Berger, did that. Being um, that character, did a lot of people check you out for that? <laughs> Sorry, but I had to ask. You know, I mean, it's it goes with the territory. Um, 
to yes in all for all intents and purposes um i there there were some friendly gropes back in the day and you know <laughs> sit sit nothing nothing inappropriate nothing too inappropriate but um yes uh it didn't hurt my dating life <laughs> they say that eyes are the windows of the soul but i think songs are what song or cycle of songs tells us who you are oh wow what a great question Thank you. Um, you know, whenever someone says like, what is your favorite movie or what's your favorite this or what? I always have a hard time because I have so many. So like this, this question sort of provokes several answers that come to mind. Um, I'm going to have to take it back to Elaine Stritch at Liberty. Mm. Uh, her one woman show, uh, which, you know, was about surviving show business and battling with uh, alcoholism and, you know, uh, a series of uh, unfortunate and, or, or rather sort of a, you know, a roller coaster, a life in the arts. And I, I feel like that, uh, that show, that album uh, really speaks to me um, and some of the, some of the things that I've been through. And I, and I think that's a lot of what my show is also about sort of the insanity or the absurdity of surviving show business for, in my case, about three decades. What um, songs are in your show and what what song would you what song are you the most excited to bring to your audience? Oh, wow. Um, again, this is one of those favorite questions where it's hard to choose just one, but I'll, I'll give you a great example. No, one, more. one of one of the numbers. One of the numbers is called the Hollywood Don'ts and Do's. <laughs> and it's it's a it, it's a Noel Coward melody from the musical Sail Away that I lovingly rewrote the lyrics to. And I'll give you a small taste of it. Cool. Um, it goes a little bit like this. Don't bring an eight ball of cocaine to set. Do <laughs> memorize your lines. Don't screw all your co-stars. Stay away from clubs and bars. Try not to break these guidelines. <laughs> and so forth. So it's a sort of a cautionary tale about things to do and not do while pursuing a career in the arts. Um, there's also um, some some classic standards, like the great composer Harold Arlen. One of my favorite songs of his, I Wonder What Became of Me, is uh, a standout song in the show that I use. Uh, I interweave it with a story. So that sort of goes, you know, it's one of those talking songs. Um, uh, the opening number of the show is really exciting. Uh, do you know the musical Little Me? Of course. Of course. Okay. So little. So I rewrote Wait, the you're lyrics. You're talking to a girl that probably knows, and my friends will tell you this, like every musical ever written. <laughs> oh, so I'm talking to the right person. Yeah. So I don't need. I don't need to give you all these little prefaces. Uh, no, I but my audience doesn't. So yeah. That's true. So I I lovingly rewrote uh, this 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 boy this buoyant. Uh, joyous uh, opening number from from a musical comedy from the 1960s uh, by Cy Coleman and Car uh, Carolyn Lee. Um, I rewrote it as I, I don't know if I can say the word, but F in me. <laughs> and uh, it's a great body little cabaret number that opens the show and sort of sets the sets the tone for the evening. Um, another one is uh, a lot of these have uh, uh, off colored names. Um, it was a shit show, which is a beautiful, hysterical love song about a horribly dysfunctional relationship. Um, those are those are three or four of, of my favorites. That's the reason the show is at 930. Correct. <laughs> Not for the kids. Um, what kind of shows would you like to do? Like, who would you like to take on? What roles? Oh, wow. Another great question. Um, I love Tennessee Williams. Actually, you might see behind me, I have his, the, the collected volumes of him. Um, anyway, uh, the chance to play any of any of any of his any of those big characters, um, uh, Summer and Smoke, Night of the Iguana, um, uh, Period of Adjustment. I mean, they're, you know, even even the ones that aren't the best his plays are just miles beyond m most playwrights. I think I consider him the greatest playwright since Shakespeare. So uh, certainly the most important American playwright. Anyway, so uh, anything Williams would be a dream. 
So you're more of a play, per, more of a th theater play person than a musical person? Here's the thing. I, I do both and I love them both equally, but I have a character voice, as you might have heard. Right. So, um, you know, and so much of theater nowadays is pop and all of that. And there's a place for that. Um, but, you know, I'm a little bit more like traditional musical theater comedy, I guess you can say. So if the right pre opportunity presented itself, you know, I would be there in a moment. But um, theater is a little bit more accessible for me. Or, or rather plays, I, I should say. What would you like to happen next in your career? So, uh, you know, I'm at a crossroads, or I have been maybe the last few years. I'm I'm in a new phase of my career as a as a writer performer. You know, I I, I wrote this show, and in the last five years, um, like basically uh, shortly before COVID, uh, I really got into my into my writing zone, and I have I have seven shows, including this one in development. Wow. So um, they're all at varying levels. Some of them are just off the page and other ones are closer to a production. Uh, one of the ones that is, so basically I, I, I want to see myself move into that role more concretely. I want some of these, I want some of these productions to happen off, you know, whether it's off Broadway or whatever, you know, it's, it's, it's more about the art. It's more about it happening than it, you know, having to be, you know, Broadway or something I you know uh, I'm I'm excited to see some of these productions come to fruition um one of the first of them is 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 an unauthorized Batman villain parody musical oh wow um and I may or may not be playing the Joker in that I I bet you could <laughs> maybe see that uh for me is that good? um uh, and it's going to be happening at one of my favorite um alternative cabaret spaces in the city that you would definitely know. I'm going to keep mum on which one it is, but it looks like it's happening in a, in February around Valentine's Day. So, um, hey, I might I might have to come back on the show. Is all I'm saying. Okay, um, <laughs> you should apply. You should go to my site. The Here Art Center is okay. oh has this new grant for fifty thousand dollars, and they're looking for people with all kinds of interdimensional and brand new ideas for theater. I uh, is this is this the here theater um yeah. down to, uh remind me where 6th Avenue. There we go. Oh, that's so fantastic. I did not know that. I, yeah, I absolutely that actually. I just learned about it. You oh, have to, okay. February 9th to apply. You have to what? You have till February 9th to apply. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I think people should know about this. Oh, it's that 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 really is a great opportunity. I mean, I know that those those do exist out there, but uh, you they know, do, there's they're hard to find. They're hard to yeah. find, and you have to know, like, you know, that's one of the things I try to do with my, my side is try to demystify theater and demystify, you know, how you get things. That's why I ask some of the questions I ask because they're like your, you know, what song describes you should change constantly it, because you're never the same person in the same moment you know and we're expected to be and which is crazy um what haven't i asked you that you would like our audience to know let's see um maybe a little bit more about the show like some of the some of the stories and stuff i'll be sharing share so, away <laughs> so basically five years ago right after my 30th birthday um there's no there's no kind of pleasant way of putting this but my place in the industry kind of fell apart casting directors didn't know what to do with me um i had a bit of a reputation problem for in my early 20s when i had all those big breaks that we discussed earlier um some of that went to my head in my early 20s and um i garnered a reputation for being a, a little bit of a diva um i'm now past all of that but that's why i mentioned that the show is in part sort of a, a cautionary tale about things to avoid uh when pursuing a career in the arts um so i go into i go into career setbacks um and then also new career opportunities like the one i mentioned and then i also tell stories about um my mental health crisis which happened a few years ago um uh i landed in a in a in a psychiatric ward um 
I was only there for a week. It was it was not a big deal. It was during the pandemic. And I think a lot of people were dealing with mental health issues during the time. And uh, all that isolation didn't help. But it's, you know, it's another funny story because by the time I left the hospital, I was literally putting on shows with the other patients. Um, <laughs> I, I, I perform one of the numbers that we did in the hospital in the show. Um, uh, a, a rousing group number from the musical Susical called How Lucky You Are. Maybe you know it. I do. Yes. Um, and uh, and then I also talk about, uh, you know, a little bit of my of my dating life. Uh, the my uh, I'm not, again, may I curse? May I use the S word? Sure. My shit show of a love life. Uh, w- again, with that song, uh, I go into a very funny story about um, f- falling in love for all intents and purposes with someone who I met who had str- ironically uh, a very similar background to me. They were also a child actor. They also suffered from mental health issues, and uh, they also like to have a good time. They also like to party, and those three things are kind of redundant. But anyway, uh, so this person and I really hit it off, and um, uh, we had this sort of disastrous uh, relationship. And um, it, you know, it wasn't funny at the time, but now it makes for hysterical theater. Um, so I'm surprised, uh, I'm surprised you didn't write a parody to the little things we do together. <laughs> You know what? It's funny you say that. I covered that song in one of my previous cabaret shows in in my uh, it was an homage to Elaine to to Elaine Stritch, who sings that song in the musical company, which is right. which is for for the audience who doesn't know. Um, so technically, I've used that one already, although it, that that very well could have been uh, another another placement for this for that number. I love the fact that you're so honest. You know, a lot of times people like to hide the quote unquote not so nice things about themselves, but who made the world God to say these are not the nice things about us? I just, I always find that so odd. Um, I agree with you. I'm not, I'm sorry not to cut you off. I just, I agree. And I think that, you know, a lot of these things I'm talking about, career setbacks, mental health, uh, shit show of a love life are considered sort of taboo issues right you know they're they, also they, universal but they're universal that's it that's it and you know um as much as the show for me don't get me wrong it was therapeutic on some level to sort of work through all of this in a funny way i think what's most important is that other people can relate to these things and uh and and have been you know we did the show once in september this is our second time doing it um so people have already told me that you know the show helped them to feel better about this that or the other and that's that's the best thing and i i I, so i i agree i think more uh i think more theater should sort of push the envelope in that direction and talk about these things that are hard to talk about but so important to talk about Yeah, I'm a firm believer that we should talk about these things and not try to manipulate people's minds into things. Because for some reason, theater is turning into the manipulation life. And I'm not quite sure why. Um, Yeah, theater theater has taken a has taken a turn lately. Um, I won't elaborate too much because it's so, you know, the 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 political minefield of it all is so, you know, but but theater really it has taken the landmines right it has taken it it has taken some some turns and all but um i hope i hope that that uh you know eventually it becomes about you know what what play is the best play and what artists are the great artists Happy, lovely <laughs> right and i'm a voter so yeah there you go you know i saw i saw the new musical how to dance in ohio last night where seven autistic performers are making their debut and they are incredible the wow. writer the lyricist the director the choreographer the songwriter they're all it's all their first time and i'm telling you this show is gonna sweep it has so much heart so much soul it's traditional musical theater where ooh shows have arcs songs make sense and the audience what's the most miraculous thing about this show is that the audience is with them from moment one so you know people keep saying oh but the audiences won't like it yeah really because i just watched it happen and 
I think part of my favorite part of the show was watching the audience because they were in tune with something that was real. And I think, you know, we're so afraid of this. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing your show. I, w <clears throat> I wish I were available. Unfortunately, I'm not. But um, I want to see it. And I, I hope to get a chance to see it. Abs absolutely. We, we, we're not sure if we're doing it in New York again. I have a feeling that we will. But we definitely are taking it um, on tour. Oh, good. Um, yeah, we we have we we we're lining up our cities now, but um, very excited. All all great places, you know, great cabaret theaters, um, uh, tri-state area, and also or, or or rather East Coast, and also some stuff on the West Coast. So you know, um, I think you know people in Los Angeles, for example, like love New York stuff. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah, I think it'll I think it'll play great there. It's a superficial land of life. I'm right. from there. <laughs> Are you really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Born Good in Pasadena. Stuff. Pas I was going to ask. Pasadena. I actually like Pasadena a lot. Well, I did, but not anymore. Yeah, uh, yeah. What? Um, will you have the list of where you're going to be playing, like, by tonight? I wish I did. No, it's a little early. Basically, we, we are... Um, putting a sizzle reel after our performance tomorrow night to to give it to all of these venues who are interested um, um and i have a feeling that nine out of ten or or all ten uh i have a feeling it's go they're they're all going to uh they're all going to move forward but it's hard to talk about things until it's official so yeah you jinx it i know it sounds crazy exactly but exactly um, tell my audience when you're playing again yes so uh, Paul Iacono, Unfiltered, happens tomorrow night, which uh, I'm, I'm not sure when this is airing, but Friday, November 17th, 9.30 p.m. at the Green Room 42, which is inside that big purple hotel, Yotel, on 42nd Street and 10th Avenue, which I just heard referred to recently by a very funny comedian friend of mine, John Hill, as the Las Vegas of New York cabaret spaces. I guess because it's in a big purple hotel and it is, you know, it, it has it has a little bit of the a little bit of that flair to it, I guess you could say. Uh, so you're playing Friday, Friday night. OK, I thought it was Saturday for some reason. No, so Friday. Friday, when November seventh. Saturday 17th. earlier. Nope, Friday, guys. Um, but I still I can't go because I'm going to the New York Pops. Um, Fair enough. I'm sorry, Sutton Foster, Kelly O'Hara. Um, enough said. I I get that. I get that. I look forward to talking to you again. Ditto. It was a pleasure. Thank you.